Hi, Hi everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Welcome to another round of afternoon doodling. My name is Lynn. I work for the San Mateo County Library System. You may recognize my face from the Belmont branch or perhaps from the other art streams that we've been doing. And I am joined by... My name is Debbie and I also work for San Mateo County Libraries and you would normally find me at the Millbrae branch. All right. All right. So today is going to be another challenge doodle, and today is going to be at least one more time of we're going to switch things up a little bit, and it is going to be Debbie that gets to take on the challenge, Lovely. while I get to just sit back, relax, and watch. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> I have an excuse. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm doing it for you, Lynn. I Thank fully you. appreciate it. <laughs> All I right. really do appreciate it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you need to rest. And also, I'm very excited. I love getting to watch you draw. Thank you. <laughs> People okay. have seen me do it so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe I'll just get my screen fired up so that you can see my, um, my drawing pad. Mm -hmm. Let's see in just a moment. There we are. Okay, here's my drawing awesome. pad. So, what am I going to be drawing today? So, it is admittedly a little mean, but it has been foreshadowed. <laughs> I did ask you previously, I was curious about your approach to backgrounds. Oh, that. <laughs> that. Yes, that one. Okay. okay. It is something you agreed to. Yes, okay. And you're free to do something else if you want. That's always always a possibility, but I figured as a potential starting point, maybe an underwater landscape could be fun to see, especially if you've caught our previous doodle streams. We've managed to draw underwater creatures quite a bit. That's true, yeah. Okay. So we can see if you were paying attention to any of the lessons. Mm. <laughs> I think I drew some of those underwater um, creatures too. Yeah, but yeah, I did yeah. It was draw. a mix. I think you actually have drawn more of them than I have. Yeah, but. jellyfish and uh, mm -hmm. Loch Ness monster and octopus. Yeah. So mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So kind you got, you should have a pretty solid tool belt. Okay. So I tend to draw my um, my backgrounds pretty um, one dimensional in a way. You know, uh, honestly. So I'm just gonna do like a straight on um, background, I guess. So, okay. and I usually do like ocean floor. Mm -hmm. And maybe what I'll do is have like a, maybe like a cave. Ooh, interesting. So I'm gonna do that. Maybe this, let's see, I haven't decided this cave looks quite yet, but I'm just gonna mm -hmm. kind of do this first. Mm -hmm. Just kind of templating it out. Mm -hmm. And then I I tend to go like very like Great Barrier Reef in a way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I like to draw like lots of coral. Mm. Coral is kind of fun for me to draw because it's, you can do you can be very, um, you don't have to be nice and neat about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very much one of those like scribble pattern shapes yeah. that you just fill out however much feels satisfying. Exactly. That's why I kind of like, I have fun doing that because it's, That's in a way, it's a little like relaxing too. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and then I also, what do I tend to do? I usually tend to do like long blades of like kelp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know. those are always fun to include because the wave kind of inherently implies the movement of the water. That's true. Me. Yeah. That's just nice. To touches of color as well amidst all the blue. Yeah. What else do I put underwater? Um, My biggest curiosity in this prompt is just sort of what details do you include 
and how many, if any, might be used to factor into, like, if this was meant to be part of a story, what is being established in this picture that kind of lends itself to that, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Oh, I guess, well, uh, yeah, I guess it depends on the story, you know, like, mm -hmm. who, how many characters are swimming around, um, you know, in this case, like, what's in this cave? Like, <laughs> who's gonna go mm -hmm. in this cave, you know? somebody live in this cave um you know i guess yeah it all depends on like also how many characters are in the shot mm -hmm. if you have a lot of characters in the shot you don't want to crowd it too much with um, a lot of background yeah. right mm -hmm. so um but if you're just kind of like doing like an establishing shot you know like for example like um you know, from one of your past episodes, uh, you know, past mm -hmm. programs about um, uh, panel panel decisions, and it's kind yeah, of very yeah. much like film, like you mentioned before, like sometimes you just start with like an overhead shot or like a just a establishing where uh, the setting is. Mm -hmm. so, so you might want to be as detailed as you want in that particular panel, right? Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, if it's just a background, I might not spend as much time with that background. Mm -hmm. I might play with this more like in color just to make it mm -hmm. more interesting. Um, yeah. I kind of think it will, underwater, it'll like lend itself more to um, more depth and stuff too. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, like that's a trick I've been using quite a bit where it should have been just this past week, I think, if I recall correctly, that um, I talked a bit about page flow and showed one of the comics that I've been working on in my spare time. Mm -hmm. And that comic is set like a solid 70% of the time in a completely dark cave. Yeah. <laughs> in order to like dodge around trying to really detail backgrounds each time. Mm -hmm. But it does also make it a very interesting process where when I'm sketching out what is in the background, it's very like minimally detailed. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I start playing with the colors and the lighting, like you can kind of get away with implying that there's more than what you really drew. Mm -hmm. Ah, I keep little crap. <laughs> <laughs> I have to put a little character in there. Mm -hmm. It's like a sandy little bottom ocean floor mm -hmm. Maybe. are shells shells on ocean floors i don't even know they gotta uh, be right they gotta be because they wash up onto the shore so yeah. they came from somewhere yeah <laughs> okay maybe i'll start with that sometimes i do like bubbles mm -hmm. so it's more like underwater <laughs> yeah adds a little bit of like texture <laughs> yeah uh, so I'm going to just go with that sketch first and then maybe okay. I'll just do some... Ah, you took a trick out of my book. <laughs> what? Same document, different oh. drawings. <laughs> I caught a glimpse of Mal for the last did. week. Yes! <laughs> and, yeah, that's, that's definitely uh, what you, you usually do. So I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. It's the same one. Um, what kind of back um, tool should I use? Sorry, I'm going to choose, mm -hmm. try to find a tool Oh, yeah. They have a watercolor brush. Um, which one was that? Oh, um, I think it's in two different places. I think it's in artistic and also possibly painting. Should I try that one? Sure. Oh, but, that color, um, though. It's at the bottom of the list somewhere, but... Try painting. Oh, watercolor? Let's see if yeah. I can this. <laughs> My work. <laughs> the biggest thing is how it layers. Yeah. And I do like the texture it has at the edges as if it's bleeding out a little. Uh-huh. Yeah, it is nice. And I might make it a little bit darker on top. On the bottom, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the lighting would be coming directly downwards. Yeah, I guess. And I might follow that for 
for the rest of the drawing too. Mm -hmm. It's always fun making gradations too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a fairly simple way of sort of implying like lighting and movement without really having to think too hard about where said lighting goes. Yeah. Let's see. Oops. When you start light and you get dark and that just kind of naturally indicates a shadow. Uh-huh. Hmm. I don't know if I like this tool for this. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, it might work. It'll just take a while. <laughs> you are also totally free to switch up tools. I just said watercolor because it's underwater. No, I, I like it for this background actually, but I'm just mm -hmm. trying to decide do I want to spend time looking for another tool or just uh, yeah, that's fair. Procreate has a lot. <laughs> yeah. A lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah, I feel like most people this is a very broad statement that I don't have a basis on, but I feel like most people end up with like a small selection of tools that they just sort of default end up using. I do too, yeah. I'll agree with that. Yeah, like I know I have my go-to selections of like, I figured out how these brushes work, therefore it is what I use for everything. everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like, I, we've talked about Inktober before, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Have we talked about Inktober? Um, Touch on it, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's the month of October where you draw every single day um, with some prompts, mm -hmm. uh, word, one word prompts. And with Inktober, that's when I like to kind of explore um, using different tools. So there are a lot of like go-to tools that I'll, I'll use even for just Inktober. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Cause I was like, oh yeah, I remember this from last year. I don't usually use it for um all my projects but mm -hmm. but it's fun to use every once in a mm -hmm. while just to kind of play with play with the different tools yeah it's a good exercise to sort of like change things up and see how like even if you're approaching with the same ideas like how different tools change what your end results are mm -hmm. Uh, yes. <laughs> the nice thing about digital art is also the layers. <laughs> yes, it is. And you could you could do it in like um, you know traditional mm -hmm. work, but oh, absolutely, it, but it's a lot more work. <laughs> and you can use yeah. like you can use tools like what is it Frisket? Have you ever played with Frisket? Mm -hmm. That's what it's called. Um, it's basically like this paint that you can you can paint on to mask certain parts. So if you're uh -huh. if you're watercoloring and you don't want to, uh -huh. uh, uh huh. Okay, I know the product. I didn't know that was what it was called. <laughs> yeah. So like, if I wanted to paint these, I wanted to paint this background blue but I don't want to paint over all my leaves and my coral and my crab. I might paint the frisket over my coral and my leaves and my crab. And, um, and then I can, after I paint over that with the frisket, then I wash it over with all this blue. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be nice and neat. And then after that, I can rub off the frisket because it's kind of like mm -hmm. rubbery, erasery type. Yeah. And, it, and then you'll see your... Um, your clean paper underneath the frisket. Yeah, it kind of protects the sections that you don't want to be covered in paint yet if you right. want to keep like the vivid color right. rather than having it be tinted based on whatever color you painted right. underneath. That's a nice like, like There's kind of two approaches. Either you can paint your crab blue and then paint over top on red and get kind of a bluish tint to that red. Or if you keep the crab blank while you're painting the rest of the paper and then you add your red to the crab or whatever color you want to choose, then it's red pops a lot more. Right. 
So there's kind of advantages to both versions, but it's also a good trick for if you want to maintain highlights while painting. Mm -hmm. Just kind of doing darker mm -hmm. leaves in the background. Kind of more transparent in a way. Yeah, I like the layering effect. I'm not really a, a digital painter, by the way. So <laughs> that is okay. <laughs> it's uh, not my biggest strength. And just as a disclaimer, I do not claim to be a expert in this. Mm -hmm. Doing yeah, I know there's so many digital artists out there where I look at their pro like their final artworks that they did digitally, and I'm like, I don't know how you did that. Uh huh. <laughs> I do not understand the rendering process that took place in order to make the thing look the way it does. Yeah. Like, yeah there's always a learning curve to it. Yeah. It and also all... really depends on what you enjoy doing yourself. Right. It all comes to practice, you know, mm -hmm. as well. Practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. So, in a way, this is a good exercise mm -hmm. for me because it's one of my weak points. So, <laughs> you're helping me, you're forcing me to practice, practice, practice. So, that's good. <laughs> to be fair, I feel like it's a lot of people's weak point. Yeah, uh, like, yeah, we're not the only ones. I feel like it's in a similar kind of category with hands. Like, mm. it's either you absolutely hate it and only do it when you have to, mm -hmm. or you are that one person that really likes doing it. Yeah, right. Did I do that in the wrong way? Okay. Do you have any sort of uh, thought process when it comes to picking colors? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of like grab and go with your first instinct? Pretty much. Uh, and if I don't like it, then I'll just, you know, especially with digital art, I, mm -hmm. I get that luxury of being able to just um, erase, you know, play with another color basically. Mm -hmm. So um, if I were um, using traditional materials, then I would probably be a little bit more conservative with putting down colors. I would probably play with like a, um, I'd have a, a scrap piece of paper nearby mm -hmm. and, and um, using that to, to make sure it's the color that I want. Mm -hmm. Um, because I can't undo that on a, on a traditional piece of paper. It is much more difficult. <laughs> yes. Oops, I totally put that in the wrong alley for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll do the cave next. Ooh, that kind of works nicely for the cave. I always feel like I struggle with colors. Like, I almost prefer coloring traditionally because I'm limited in my options based on my supplies. Mm. Where with digital, I find myself constantly second guessing what I chose. Mm. But like, to like the most ridiculously like pedantic degree, where mm. it's one of those like, ooh, do I want the color to be at like 58% capacity or 57%? <laughs> <laughs> One of those things where I'm constantly getting my ca myself caught up on like the slightest of difference and being like, I don't know what looks better. It's too much. It's like choice paralysis. Maybe. It, yeah, it's know? too many options. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I can totally see that. Okay, I'm trying to do mm -hmm. some, give some depth mm -hmm. to this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the reason why so many of my drawing documents look like absolute messes, because I have like the sketch layer, 
I have like the color layer and then I have like a gazillion other layers that are all dedicated to me trying to fix the colors. Mm. Want to know where it goes. Yeah, where does it go? <laughs> oh. Oh, I don't think I like that. Okay. And then maybe what I'll do is just do a little bit of inking over. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take away my Oh no, did I? Okay, never mind. I'm taking my mouth. Yeah, you're so <laughs> good. I was it's like, safe. <laughs> Everything's fine. Uh, but what am I going to use to ink it? Mm. Hmm. I don't know what I should use. <laughs> That's. Nope, I don't like that. Because I tend to like, you know, which pen I like. Yeah, the studio pen. But let's see if ink for you. Yay. It's a little too inky. Yeah, maybe. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go with that. All right. So after I put my colors down, then I'll just try to get my lines. I do like the way that the natural way in which the program imitates paint layering does sort of create a sense of like shading and lighting to it. Mm. Yeah. Because that is one thing that can be very fun to play with when you're using like actual paints, or in this case, watercolors, where based on the material, it's very easy to sort of like layer up how vivid you want something to be. Uh -huh. and that in turn, lends it like a very sort of easy way of giving it depth without having to work too hard. Mm -hmm. Which is always a great thing when it comes to shading. <laughs> Yeah. The less work, the better. Yes. <laughs> In my personal opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not our favorite thing to do. Not between the two of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There are definitely people out there who get what it has to be an immense amount of joy out of like shading and rendering. Mm -hmm. and yeah. I both envy them and also really don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm more of like a line work type mm -hmm. of gal. Mm -hmm. um, it's just what I enjoy the mm -hmm. most, I think. Um, most of my drawings are just super bold mm -hmm. inks, uh, yeah. which I think is different from yours, Lynn, right? You do more sketchy. Yeah, I do more sketchy, but I'm in the same boat of that's the part that I enjoy the most. Mm -hmm. Like specifically solidifying the lines. Mm. And trying to convey all the details needed to understand like what's happening in the drawing mm -hmm. on like just the lines alone. And then I get to the colors and I'm like, I don't know where this fits. And then I get to the shading and I'm like, no. <laughs> I drew this line here because it looked aesthetically good, but now I realized it doesn't make sense with the shadows. So oh, it's just yeah. no shadows. <laughs> and I kind of did this a little bit backwards than I usually do. I think usually what I would do is maybe do my inks first. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, I did the colors first. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it definitely means it still works. Like, I feel like this is a version that, like, that order of operations might actually be more useful mm. if you were doing it, like, with traditional materials. Mm -hmm. Because 
you don't have to worry about coloring in your lines if you wait until the end to draw them. Mm -hmm. And especially with paints and inks, um, the order in which you put the materials on the page, kind of similar to like what we were talking about with the coloring and um, that like masking fluid you mentioned, mm -hmm. where if you ink all your lines and then you paint over them, the lines themselves are going to be dulled a little bit based on the color that you use. Whereas if you put all the paint down and then you ink directly on top with like black marker, it's going to be a really crisp black comparatively. That's true. So a lot of it depends on like how you want the drawing to feel, like what sort of style you want to do, but mm -hmm. there's definitely a technique in deliberately saving your inking for the last step. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a little bit of both right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, just because I remembered I kind of missed something. Mm. I want a shadow in there too. <laughs> that looks better coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the order of operations is less of a concern for digital just because you have the ease of moving layers around. Yeah. But at the end of the day, everything it's doing is kind of trying to imitate what you could have done traditionally. Right. But with more sort of flexibility of the order in which you do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Oof, I can't get this. Brush is too big. <laughs> Finish inking real quick. Uh oh, I forgot my color. Do you have a certain process when you draw your backgrounds, Lynn? Like tends to vary because the majority of the time, unless I'm telling a specific story, I tend not to draw backgrounds at all. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so a lot of my art are just characters like floating in a white void. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I feel like the biggest things I tend to struggle with are like the perspective of it. Okay. Because I have the bad habit of, because I like drawing characters more, I'll draw characters first and then have to like forcibly fit the environment around them, <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't always work as well as I want it to. Yeah. And I've, I've kind of touched on this before, if I recall correctly. I tend to only add details if I feel like it adds something to the context of what's going on or like mm -hmm. who the characters are where they are i don't like adding details just for the sake of adding details mm. but at the same time that tends to run headlong into putting characters in what feel like very empty spaces mm. and so i never quite know what to add to like not overwhelm mm. but also not underwhelm okay I think we both like to um, draw what's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of the majority of people. Like, <laughs> can I do white on this? Probably. I don't know. Am I in the wrong? Might. Okay, I'm in the wrong layer. That's why. Uh. Let's see. I always love it when people can do like 
really cool, in-depth, full of detail backgrounds. Yeah. But half the time, I just don't even know what details I would think of adding, much less trying to think of how would they fit in the space in a way that makes, like, perspective sense. Mm. Because I always draw the characters first, and then whatever angle I draw them at, I'm like, oh, and now the space needs to match. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. Darn it. <laughs> characters are fun to draw. They are. I just like doing the poses. <laughs> and then you run into things where it's like, oops. Now I have to try and remember that this waist-high thing that they're standing next to needs to be waist-height no matter what position they're in. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're just about at the half hour. All right. Wow. I think I'm just about done to adding some bubbles. Mm -hmm. But I think that's about it. I yeah. did in my little background with some kelp and a little crab and some coral. <laughs> Very proud of you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> that wasn't terrible. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, backgrounds are not my favorite thing, but, you know, it's, it's something to, to practice. And um, mm -hmm. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm proud of this one, you know, mm -hmm. just, I can, I can use some of the ideas that I put in this and in, into mm -hmm. a future drawing or something like that. Yeah. Thank you for the prompt. Yeah, thanks for taking <laughs> the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so all you out there, if you guys are drawing along too, or if you are, you know, creating, um, you know, any, any drawings during, while you're, while you're watching our programs, just remember, <laughs> Hey, tag us <laughs> at SMCL Creates. Tag your drawings and we might feature on a future show. Or you can also um, tag them on social media uh, at SMC Libraries on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And again, you know, just to show us what you're doing because we'd love to see. Yes. And then also um, you can always visit smcl.org to see all the other great programs that are always happening. Um, you know, from uh, story times, musical story times. Um, we have summer learning going on right now. So yes. a lot of STEAM programs, a lot of fun projects that you can do all summer. It happens uh, every single day or every weekday. We have some kind mm -hmm. of cool project going on. So check yeah, out so the virtual STEAM summer camp. That's so it. Yeah. There's lots of cool things that are going to be featured on our YouTube page. Lots of different crafts you can try at home. Um, we've got some... I believe it's outside performances that'll be doing like essentially special guest videos like we had the Circus of Smiles last week. Mm -hmm. So as always, the easiest place to get all the quick links to all the cool things we're doing is at our website at smcl.org. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, be sure to check them out. Yeah. Go back to our page after you watch this video and just yes. marathon everything else. <laughs> All right, all thank right. you all for joining us. Yeah, thank uh, you. And thank you, Debbie. Thank you oh, again. <laughs> thank you, then. <laughs> all right. Thanks for tuning in and have a good rest of your day. You too. Bye. Bye.